All right. So good afternoon, everybody. Um, welcome uh, to the bylaws and resolutions advisory committee meeting. Today is Friday, October 13th. It's Friday the 13th. This should go well. <laughs> um, it is one. Uh, uh, we're going to call this meeting uh, to order at 1.03 p.m. It is a hybrid meeting, so we have uh, both um, in-person attendees and virtual. Um, we do have quorum because we need three committee members out of our five. Um, uh, I don't have it marked on here, but our excused committee members are Bob and Pam. Um, I had already sent this out to uh, uh, be posted on the website before Pam told me she wasn't going to be able to join us. So um, they are excused. Um, so as usual, I um, would like to ask uh, those of us all here if it's okay to continue recording our meeting. Any opposition? No. Nope. Okay. okay. Great. Thank you. Um, so I am Laura Pangrass, chairperson of this committee. Um, we have with us today Keith Kaiser in person and Augie uh, Rent, 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 I should have just let you do your own. Oh, can you wait? Uh, can you let Jim in? You see the red button? Um, there we go. And uh, Augie is our other person here today. Um, Steve is our board liaison who is here. Uh, so thank you very much. Um, we are letting our one guest um, uh, what you there. <laughs> Laura, I can hear you. Okay, can you hear us? Okay. Yeah, I apologize for being a little late. That's okay. We're running a little smidge late ourselves, so we're all good to go. Um, so um, we're just getting to the introduction of guests. So Jim, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Jim Trommel, a member of the association for 22 years now. All right. Actually, 21 years, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Um, uh, we appreciate you being here. All right, so the agenda is up on the screen. Let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger for you. Uh, please let me know if there is anything that you would like to add to it. There's the bulk of our unfinished slash new business uh, discussions. Anyone have anything to add? The two top things under unfinished are they're just there's no action for us. I'm just leaving on them uh, on there so that I don't forget that we do need to follow up at some point to, if we need to nudge uh, um, other you know committees or whatever. Um, so um, okay. So hearing no objections or amendments to the agenda, the agenda is approved. Um, after that, um, we are going to approve the minutes from our September 8th meeting, which here. Uh, please let me know if you see anything that needs to be corrected. I think this was the only section here uh, that Augie had questions about since Steve was not in person. How much did, um, uh, is that, you know, good enough to leave it? We left it, we kind of took the email that you had sent us um, and used that as your, right. your report. Does it need to be any shorter or anything like that, Steve? I don't think so. It looks it looks pretty much right to me. Yeah, that's fine. I don't see any problem with it. Okay. Um, and then the bottom half is here. That's the old business 
section. Here's the new business section. <laughs> and we ended with going over the governance document and we concluded at 3.41 p.m. because that one we did start at two o'clock versus one or one o'clock start time. Anyone see anything else on there? It looks good to me. Okay, so hearing no objections or amendments, the, mi the minutes will be approved as presented. Okay, now we are up to public comment. So Jim, as guest, would do you have any public comment at this time? Uh, not at this time, no. Okay, thank you. All right, um, um, then chairperson's report is down below. It basically just states what I did. I attended virtually the annual, um, or not the annual, I should have taken that word out. Um, the um, regular, the September Ocean Pines Directors Meeting on September 30th. Um, I did email Michelle Ross from here um, to add our approved minutes from our July meeting. Um, to the website and the video from our September meeting. And that's how I found out we had a technical issue um, with the recording. So it's not, uh, the September 8th meeting was not available on the website. Communicated with past uh, bylaws committee members, see if they would like to rejoin the committee again. Offer was declined. Standing invitation to attend the bylaws committee meetings was given to them instead. And then upcoming uh, tasks still to be completed um, is to um, still need to email the elections committee chair to encourage them to relook. Um, and we'll get through our discussions, uh, but relook at the M06 prior to if they have to, to prevent any last minute changes prior to the next election cycle. Um, nobody from directors has actually mentioned it. I am doing this part on my own based on what we did last year, but um, last year every committee needed to turn in an annual report by the end of October. So I uh, put that into our agenda for today um, so that we can get that submitted by the end of October. Um, and then uh, I will email her after today's meeting um, to add the, the minutes from the September 8th meeting that we just approved. And we do have um, all of our future meeting dates into um, uh, July of 2024. I did check they are on the OPA website calendar. So I know they've been approved then uh, that way. So, okay, so that's my report. Um, up next is Steve. Uh, for our board liaison, do you have a report? Do you anything you want to share now? Or uh, I don't. Um, the board has met uh, once for an organizational meeting. <clears throat> excuse me, and, and uh, once in a, our regular September board meeting. Um, we then also had a walkthrough, I guess, at the uh, beach club to take a look at it, particularly the uh, second floor. But um, there's really nothing uh, more than that for me. The board is still sort of moving along at figuring less than a full pace. Some of the people <laughs> we'll it. So we'll see what happens at the October meeting, which will be next a week from tomorrow. All right, thank you. So under unfinished business, basically I'm calling it status updates for some of it is um, left the M06 on there. Um, there. At our last meeting, we said there was no action for our committee at this time, um, I believe. So Keith, you correct me if I'm, or Augie, uh, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, but. Um, what, uh, when is the next uh, board meeting? Is it the 28th or is it the 21st? Uh, it's a week from tomorrow. 28th. It should be the end of the month. 28th. 
That should be that Saturday, the 28th. Yeah. Well, you, the 21st is a week from tomorrow. Oh, my mistake. I, I apologize. Uh, yeah, 28th is the board meeting. Got it. Okay. Thanks. My apologies. So on M06, I have down that the second reading was completed on July 17th and that it was approved with changes. Right, which we I think the discussion part is there were still some things on there that they really should relook at um, and make sure it's the way it needs to be before the next election cycle. I think uh, they squeak, squeak through some things uh, to just, you know, uh, complete that last election cycle. Okay. Um, but I think there were some uh, well, areas think, in there think, that needed to be looked at by the elections committee to make sure it all matches. Yeah, if, if I may, um, I think, um, and actually, uh, Jim is uh, probably uh, been more active about this than anyone else, but um, uh, there are there's a couple of issues. One is that the dates in the resolution and those in the bylaws do not necessarily match up. Um, there is the changes that were necessary because uh, we switched vendors um, and moved to a vendor who is not local. Um, and so the idea of being able to uh, watch the count in person as opposed to just observing it online another issue that had to be resolved <clears throat> and i and of course we also had to change the dates right. because of the delay in getting the ballots out uh, which we did sort of on the fly so um when the board uh, approved the last set of changes to m06 uh there was a general agreement that the uh, uh, elections committee needs to move on uh, bringing the resolution and the attachments to that resolution in line with the bylaws and correct any other issues that need to be corrected. Uh, and then from that point, it would come either going for first reading or it would come here and then we would uh, review it. You know, I'm not sure exactly which will happen first. But the idea was the elections committee had to, for lack of a better term, get on a stick and, and we get were this take care. Encourage them to start it sooner yeah, rather right. than later, and not right. wait till like after January. Right, April. that was something yeah. we definitely yeah. wanted to avoid. Um, I think tied to that will also be the issue of, uh, which hasn't come up, but uh, there'll also be the issue of who, whether or not we will continue to use the vendor in Washington or look for some other alternative. Right. Um, and I'm told, although I haven't seen anything, that uh, Tom Piotti, who's the chair of the Elections Committee, I thought had said he was moving, but I don't know when. I don't know that anything's happened. I just remember seeing a blurb in some publication that he was moving. So that's sort of where we are at this point. Okay. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> um, the uh, and I just left that convenience uh, fee one up there because we're still waiting to hear back from budget and finance to um, determine if that unnamed F resolution is truly a resolution or um, and if it is, we need to make it official. Right. And then if it's not, it needs to come out of the book of resolutions right. um, and all of that. But right. that is left. There's no action for us at the moment. It is just a um, something that we're waiting to hear from budget and finance. Yeah, um, I just gave myself a note check with yeah. Monica. She and I were, had talked about it after the last time it came up in the committee, and she was going to take it over to budget and finance to let them make a decision. Um, to remind them that budget and finance uh, just they just met. Last um, well, they. they at the last board meeting, there were two new members added to budget and mm -hmm. finance, okay. Doug and Colette. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that, they'll, they'll, I'll touch base with Monica about that. Okay. okay. Yeah, it might be something that just they need to be reminded about yep. because, you know. Um, and then, um, as we all know, there will be an opening available on our committee beginning in November. Technically, it's after October 24th, but since Bob 
uh, uh, this would have been his last meeting to attend, but he is um, unable to join us today. Um, but uh, um, I have reached out uh, to Linda Martin. I, she had one um, application on file that she forwarded to me. I will reach out to that person to see if they're still interested because they had indicated last year, but we had already filled all of our spots at that point uh, when they showed an interest. And this particular person is also on another committee, so I don't know if they want to be on multiple committees at the same time. Um, they're uh, on the elections committee, uh, I believe. So um, I did ask them, Linda did state that she will let um, the public relations department know to begin whenever they put their ads, you know, their advertisements out stating committee members that are looking for members, they will include bylaws in there until we get it filled. And then, um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, uh, so for right now, um, moving forward after Bob is technically done, he will become like Mr. Jim and have an open standing to join all of our meetings uh, um, as well. Okay. Um, does anybody have any questions about any of those three topics there before we move on? So, um, I am not, a, is there a certain order that anybody wants to do this in? I, uh, these are the four things that we need to discuss today. Um, the annual committee report, um, I, uh, I have, um, yeah, last year's last year's to give us an idea and then we just really need to add in the detail um of exactly which ones we if we want to list all the ones that we did or how we want to word it um uh, but that's all that we really have to do there um and then we have the m09 b08 and m01 um to to um to have some slight discussion on i would suggest we go we save the committee report discussion for last okay uh, that's my recommendation okay <coughs> so uh and which one did, did you want to do first do you have a preference anybody augie do you have a preference or steve do you have a preference on <laughs> what we tackle i i i would say start with b8 okay uh, because my my uh, tracker says that we're waiting for a new first reading with the new board, so I'm not sure what we should be doing with it right now. All right. So here is. Okay. So here's the. Too large. Here's B08. Sure, this is the has a section that I played it or not. No, I, don't, I don't think so. I think it, the history was this thing has come and gone um, and come back. Right. And so I, I, my understanding was now that it's back for consideration, the timing was such that <clears throat> anything meaningful that was going to be said about it would have to be by this board, new elected board. And so there was going to be any action on it until they had a chance to look at it, review it. And okay. I, I believe, at the, if I may, at the July board meeting, uh, it was called up for second reading. Um, and there was a motion to table uh in deference to at the time would have been three vacancies to right. fill uh, on the board that motion to table passed by a five to one vote uh so um uh i will add that um i'll defer to how the committee may want to deal with this but i am at least playing with the idea of trying to add some particular language um uh dealing with uh you know board members getting a certain you know certain benefits that others would not be entitled to 
Um, so I'm still sort of fiddling with that a little bit. Okay. Uh, so, um, but beyond, I mean, I can do that really at any time. Like if the committee wants to proceed, they can proceed. So, so what I'm hearing and making sure that I hear correctly is right now, there is no action needed by us at this time. That's right? my understanding. And then um, it could it can it could possibly come back to us then, and at that time, then we'll tackle it. Correct. That's right. My okay. So for mm -hmm. our, our purposes of today, we're going to call this one done and just keep it on the radar. Um, uh, as a Muslim to kind of pay attention to. Okay. Um, and then I would, um, if if no one objects, I'd like to go to M one next. Okay. And the last update I had on it was that it was sent to council for review and we hadn't heard anything since. Now, this is the one I believe uh, that you shared um, with all of us that it is um, going to be presented for a first reading, correct? Um, at, at the October director's meeting. So on the 28th, they have it. And this is what I sent out the other day. Um, this is the redlined um, uh, item. Um, now, uh, I don't have um, everything right in front of me, Steve, um, that you shared that. Um, is this after le uh, legal counsel has already looked at this and given their input on this? Right. Wait. I, uh, I, 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 because I sent you. Uh, I, I may have made a boo boo. That's distinctly possible. Mm -hmm. But I thought I had sent three documents. One yes, was you did. you did the resolution M zero one. The second was a memorandum uh, from council, and the third was the red line, uh, which for some reason I didn't. So I that, got but uh, the the red line, which reflect the changes that uh, he was recommending. I don't think oh, the memo. Is this the charging document for it? I don't think the memo from council was included. No, nope, that's not. It wasn't. I will send it again. It's the it's M1. I think it's two copies of M1, and then the and then the red line M1. That's that's what I see. That's what it, yeah. You got two copies of M1. Hmm. One is M1 dated 5 to 20. And. Oh, well that, and then the other one is the title of it is just M1. It was technically called the clean copy, I think. Um, yeah, so it's all the red line stuff that they want, but they put it all in. A clean format with no markings. So on that's it. what it is. So it's so the original, the, yeah. the red line visible, and the red line not visible. Okay. That's what it said. Okay, well, the, the, the red line visible would be the red line version. Okay, so that which, is the uh, one. Okay, should have, okay. That would include council's input? Should reflect council's. Uh, I, I actually sent it to you before I ever even looked at it, so I apologize. So, Did I see that? We, well, basically, here's a quick glance. It's basically the whole thing is redlined. I mean, it's not just like one paragraph that was redlined. It was the whole, whole entire thing where they've taken out things, they've reworded things, they've, um, you know, so it's, it's, this is going to be something that I think may take us a little bit to get through. Um, now, let me... Well, are, are we looking at this today? I don't, I don't. Um, the impression that I get then is if it goes through the first reading, right? On on Saturday the 28th at the director's meeting, would it then come back to us then to be able to start going through all of this before they do the second reading? Because they've got to give us time to, you know. Well, uh, uh... I will uh, make sure that the board is aware that the 
committee wants to be able to review it. Um, I, and I, I'll defer to Jim on this one, uh, but as I believe he's pointed out uh, on several occasions, um, there really is no specific time limit on the second reading. In other words, if the board would have so they could turn a special meeting yeah. um, or un, un, a, a unplanned meeting for some other reason, this could be added to the agenda to be right. dealt with. So it doesn't necessarily so it doesn't have to be an, in a month at the next every month, November. right? <laughs> and there's no guarantee that this would come up again uh, one month after the first reading. Um, I believe I am correct that uh, the bio, that the ARC is also getting the same version that was sent to you. Um, and they will probably go through it as well. And they, may, they may have questions, I, I don't know. Uh, but um, uh, the best I can say to you is I, you know, will make a point of saying at the board meeting that the bylaws committee uh, has received the, the three documents and will undertake a review and be prepared to provide the board with the uh, benefit of the committee's wisdom to go from there. I mean, yeah. Uh, Laura, could I make a comment at this point? <laughs> well, I forgot to make it official, but the Roberts rules has been suspended um, so that we can have discussion. So, yep, go ahead. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I've received the same documents that you've referred to regarding this uh, topic, uh, and uh, I, there's no uh, copy of a memorandum from the attorney in it. Uh, I think it I think it can be uh, presumed that the document, the, the, the clean document, the red line document is uh, kind of impossible to, to use really, in my opinion. You have to go to the clean document and to be able to follow what you're what you're looking at and, and what's being proposed. I think, I think it's pretty clear to me anyway that the document uh, the, the, the document for consideration by the or at a first reading is the document uh, drafted by the attorney. Uh, however, to go back to what Steve said about consideration of, of resolutions, uh, the first reading has to be at an, a regular meeting of the board with all the appropriate uh, agenda item uh, consideration and notice to the membership that's going to be considered uh, at the meeting. After that, it does not have to be considered further at a regular meeting. It can be, uh, you can go to a second reading uh, immediately thereafter and uh, approve the, the resolution. Uh, however, you'd have, it'd have to be an agenda item and, and, and so forth for members to be, members of the association to comment. Uh, you know, going on from there, again, it does not have to be approved at any particular point in time other than at a second reading. We've had resolutions in particular, the original M06 many years ago uh, went over an extended period of time before it was uh, eventually uh, approved. So that it, the, the requirements, a first reading at, the, at a regular meeting, second reading at a future meeting, and there is no limitation as to how long there can be consideration uh, before it's uh, either approved or specifically designated, it's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, it's unfortunate <clears throat> that in many cases, the first reading is just for the record. And this, this resolution deserves more than that. Uh, I, I know that does not appear to be uh, preparation, let's put it that way, for reviewing this this resolution at this, this proposed resolution is particular time, but there are there are a number of things in here. Some of them a couple, maybe a little trivial, uh, but others maybe a little bit more substantive that uh, the board really ought to be looking at this carefully and be prepared to, to be even question the, the, the drafter of the resolution at that point in time. Now I'm, I realize I'm, I'm saying what I think other other 
parties and other, uh, the board of directors should be doing, but uh, I'm just expressing way, the way I see it. I have gone through this resolution uh, proposal uh, and have a number of uh, points or questions. I'm not, I'm not asking to make them at this point in time, but I would encourage the board members to be prepared to look at this and not just say, okay, we're gonna go to a second meeting or second reading, I'm sorry. Uh, not to not to try to move this resolution on too fast. Uh, I'm certainly not trying to do that, nor am I trying to delay it. But uh, if the board members don't look at this before they just continue on, they're, they're, they're uh, perhaps setting themselves up for issues they haven't considered when it comes up for a second reading. Now, uh, kind of go back on something, and, I, and I, uh, I'm not going to talk any longer. When we were talking about uh, uh, what status a resolution is, as is coming up here in the future. In the past, uh, I think we've talked about this, uh, the, the, the approach has been any resolution action, first reading, second reading, whatever may be the case, that has not been resolved prior to a new board being seated, they all go back to start one, back to a first reading. Now this one is gonna be at a first reading, but the same would be true of B08, and I think uh, M02 may be also at a second reading. I, I don't remember the details now, but uh, in general, the, the approach has been and recommended from this committee is that resolution actions that have not been completed before the new board is seated, they go back to the very beginning when they're when they come back to the board. Anyway, that's that's enough for my my comment. I, I, I don't intend to continue in too many details on this stuff. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> um so so I've made a note on the tracker about this one, and it's going to get reviewed at the first reading of the October 20th board meeting. And I think out of that, uh, we'll find out if we have tasking. Okay. So for right now, we have no action that we need to start working on it or anything like that, unless you choose to, you know, like if, if we on our own time want to start looking at it and see if we have any questions or whatever. Correct. And then if it comes back to us, then we can get started and, and uh, delegate and call that stuff to uh, uh, to note what our questions or clarifications needed uh, for us, uh, for our committee. Um, but I'll, I'll agree with uh, Jim. This is a this red line is definitely very hard to read in the sense that it's like chopped here and there and all of that. So it almost might be better to read the clean copy that's going to be presented, kind of compare it to where the red lines are, but to be able to read it straight through, I find the clean copy is a little bit easier just because there's so much red on this one. Um, and there, and I think what has me con maybe concerned is not the right word, but confused or something like that, but there's sections that have been totally struck out in this document. So they're like creating a totally brand new document in my, to me, you know, because they're taking out paragraphs, uh, not just words or a phrase or one sentence. So it feels like we do need to look at it to make sure that something that they feel should come out, we, we agree with one another on as a committee on our side you know um so i don't know um but we can just we'll just hold this uh for right now and then uh see what happens after the october directors meeting okay they may look at this and go wow there's a lot of changes yeah we should send this over to bylaws to look at first right or the flip side is that I hope does not happen is that they just look at it, see the clean copy and say, okay, whatever, and approve it. You know what I mean? Without giving time to go through and look at all of the actual red lines themselves. You know? Well, even if they do that, uh, we always have the option later to submit a, um, 
a charging document, charging document with with whatever concerns we have and say hey, we think maybe that is true. There's some yes. tweaking needs to be done. Yeah. All right. So for right now, today, we don't have to start going through this line by line. All right. So everybody, Augie, you okay with that? Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> Jim, do you think that's a, a good? I, yeah, I, I agree with that. My suggestion is that uh, you almost look at the clean copy as a new resolution on a topic that's never been addressed before. Okay. Uh, I, I, I kind of come, come to that conclusion that that's the best way to do it. Now, it, there's I'll an existing, existing resolution that you could compare it to. Well, all, OK, but uh, you're almost it, to a point of, of ignoring the red line and then looking at the, the proposed resolution as if it was a new topic and a new resolution. Okay. I'll be honest, I like the red lines. Uh, maybe I've been doing this too long. <laughs> <laughs> I, I understand, but I, I, I skimmed through it and gave up personally. <laughs> That's, that's well, thank goodness we have both kinds. We have the clean copy and the red line. So, all right. So that was the M01. Uh, moment. All right. So then M09 should be the next one up. So let me find that one. Let's see what I have here. So before we get into M09, um, is, do we have a search committee? Is it still together? Has it been disbanded? That, that was some of the comments that I believe Jim has um, uh, sent uh, and presented um, mm -hmm. that one of the reasons why he felt our committee should be looking at this again um, it may be that it's a director decision because they're the ones who have to decide. Nothing that I'm aware of has officially been done with the search committee to say it doesn't exist anymore or that it does because it's not actively promoted. It's not actively, um, doesn't have any uh, committee members uh, that are active, I think. Um, so, but but again, it's still. I believe it's still listed um, as a committee. I'm just not, the reason I'm asking is just from the standpoint of who's responsible for updating this resolution. That's why. Um, Laura, can I make a, a a quick comment on this yes. regard? What he's saying. Uh, there was a search committee appointed of two persons, uh, not for this past election, the one we just had, but for the year before that. Uh, there were two people on that uh, who did uh, participate as a committee, but for this past election, the 2023 election, there has not been, uh, uh, there was not a committee uh, appointed, and it, so there is no there is no existing committee. Uh, there is no existing committee of any kind for the search committee. Now, the, the resolution, as currently written, uh, states that once appointed, the committee remains in place until the next committee is appointed or the appointment date itself, which at the time was February 1st. It's no longer February 1st. So, if a committee had been appointed, under the current resolution, they would stay in place until February 1st of uh, on the on the resolution until February 1st of 2024. You could actually say in the bylaws now it would be that not March 1st, 2024. But to, to simplify it, there is no existing search committee. There's no basis for the one to be uh, in in existence. And my computer doesn't want to open up the website. Just trying to remember all we talked about this resolution so much. I know. And I'm just trying to remember where we left off on it. But if the bottom line is if we're just not gonna have a search committee anymore for whatever reason, then does this resolution 
because this, this resolution, as I re understand, is where the form lives. I think it's where yeah. the ap application form lives. So does it need to be retitled and assigned to somebody else, like the election committee, or well, you know, what do we do with it? Um, I, 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 uh, my my recollection is Jim's uh, narrative is correct, and that is there was a committee <laughs> ten elections ago. There was no. Uh, action or attempt to even reconstitute the committee for the 2023 election. They certainly with no action or activity by the then existing committee leading into the 2023 election. Um, I, I mean, I'm going back further than that, my recollection is that the search committee itself had recommended that it be disbanded. That there's no need for it anymore. Um, and that was yeah, that's, kicked that's, around by the board. My recollection was that the board liaison informed this committee at that time that they were going to be new tasks assigned to the search committee. I don't think that was ever done. Um, so uh, it, it's it's sort of sitting there. Now I and. and and Jim, correct me if I'm wrong, but my recollection is that within the bylaws, there is uh, some reference as to the work to be performed by the search committee. Yeah, it's uh, so if we need, sure to, we, we need to sort of kick around if, if, if at some point, if there's no search committee, do we have to amend the bylaws or not? I, and again, I. I thought that was one of the issues that no one knew it had an answer for. Um, I, I, for what it's worth, I'd be prepared to raise this with the board as to what they want to do about the search committee. But I think it's worthwhile to make it clear uh, that just ignoring or repealing uh, M09. That's what it is. Yeah, M09 uh, may not be sufficient since the bylaws have language in it as well. I, that's something I think we need to. We, maybe we should just get some better guidance. I don't know. Yes, I agree with that. And, they, and it also contains the candidate form. So even if they said, ah, we're not going to have a search command, let's just get rid of it. Well, then we got to find a home for the candidate form. Well, the, the form itself, um, oddly enough, <clears throat> and this goes back to last year. There were three different versions mm -hmm. of the candidate form right. existing on three different places on our website, none of which were in compliance with the maintained bylaws. So the the current form is now the correct form, and I would assume it could just be listed uh, an appropriate place. I don't know what it would be offhand, but an appropriate place on our web page and anyone who wanted to run could be directed to that form. Right. Uh, but um, you're right that at least one of the three forms that were there was under the search committee. Uh, I, I, let me, I'll jump in here for just a minute, try, try to limit my comment. <clears throat> There's no question that the bylaws call for the president to appoint a search committee by March 1st, subject to confirmation by the board. Uh, that, that's there. Now, there is certain qualifying information that follows that, that for whatever re reason, it's not practical for there to be a search committee. It, it does not affect the election process, it does not affect the legitimacy of the election and the validation of candidates and so on. But the, you know, the, there may be people, and I'm, I'm expressing an opinion here, I, I'm going to acknowledge that. There may be people who want to, want to uh, 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 understand those qualifying words or uh, limiting words in, in the bylaws to mean we don't have to have a search committee. I don't believe that's the correct understanding. I don't believe that con that's consistent with the uh, board 
bylaws amendments meeting that was held in December of, uh, I guess it would be 2021 now, in which a, a firm decision was made to not delete the search committee, nor is it consistent with the board position that's a, that went in the, uh, along with the balloting uh, the board position on the amendment to the bylaws regarding the search committee. There's no, no way of interpreting any of that to say that we just ignore uh, any, anything to do with the search committee. Uh, what, is, what has in fact happened is last year, or I should say this year, last election, there was no, oper no, no effort made whatsoever by the president or, or, or the board to, to appoint a search committee until after the date in which the search committee should have been appointed, which, when, which uh, at that time was uh, February 1st. Now, now it's March 1st. Uh, so the, the, the question is not whether or not we should have a search committee. It's, the question is what the, right now the question is, the pres, not the question, but the president is called for to appoint a search committee. And this is the resolution that goes that goes into the operation of the search process. This resolution is woefully out of date when it comes to the bylaws now. Uh, it, it, it is. I, I, I could sit here and go down point by point, but I'm not going to do that. I, I don't think it's appropriate for me to do that. Uh, but the, in my opinion, and, and Steve, I, I apologize for the way I'm saying this, in my opinion, what it should be t done is it takes it get taken by Steve and Laura and the committee. I apologize. In my opinion, what should be done is just be taken back to the board. If necessary, some points can be pointed out in M09 and say this resolution is out of date. A board, president of the board, it's up to you to do something. Um. Uh, that, that's fine, Jim. I, I don't. Uh, if the committee wants to uh, raise this as a uh, discussion item, uh, I assume that's uh, doable. I, uh, as a you know, through a charging document, maybe, uh, because there would be any number of questions, as you point out, Jim. Um, and we could attach uh, M09 to the charging document. Uh, I'd be, I, I, uh, whatever the committee decides to do is fine. Um, I'd be prepared to raise it simply as an email to the board. And uh, I'm guessing, just thinking about this out loud, probably uh, include council uh, on this as well. Um, I, I'm, I'm just trying to think. Of, my recollection is throughout last year and the prior board, not, not this board, the year before, there was very little, very brief discussions, better way to put it, about what to do with the search committee. Um, and I, I can't even remember the date, so I, I, it may well be that although no decision was ever made, uh, whatever was going to be done or whatever was contemplated to be done was after the deadline anyway. Um, uh, so uh, however the, the committee decides to proceed is fine. If they want to uh, forward a charging document, I'll bring it to the board's attention uh, and we'll go from there or I can do it uh, somewhat more informally uh, if that's the preference. Uh, but. Whatever, however you want to proceed is fine by me. Mm -hmm. So according to the notes from the tracker, uh, September of 22, <clears throat> it was recognized that after the, the bylaws were changes were voted and approved upon, that that then drove a, ne a necessity to update this resolution because of that, the right. changes that were approved in the bylaws now affected M09. And then um, the note says new board liaison, I don't even remember who it was at that time, uh, was gonna review those changes at a board meeting and then uh, determine what changes needed to be done to M9 
so that they become consistent with the bylaws. And then there was a uh, board liaison change out, and then there was another board liaison change out. And then um, that brought us up to March of 23, uh, where basically the whole search committee discussion started over again. So I was looking to see if an actual charging doc had ever been created, but I don't think it was because it was premised on the fact that the bylaws had been updated. So, uh, you know, it's two questions. Do we update this this uh, resolution? And if so, who does it? Because we don't appear to have a search committee, or do we? Those two people that were um, selected a couple of years ago, or a year ago, whatever. And the <laughs> board needs to make a decision on what they want to do moving forward. So I would uh, welcome you bringing it up with the board as a discussion item. Um, they don't really have something necessarily specific in front of them to prove, uh, approve, but it's more philosophical in nature that we have a resolution, doesn't match the bylaws. Um, we either need to update it or do something with it. Uh, and then the, the issue of the search committee itself. Steve, any answer? Sorry. Go ahead, I mean, the, the document I'm looking at does have some updates. Uh, are we saying that those updates are inadequate or that there's something else that needs to happen to this? Uh, You're looking at a document that's posted uh, in the archive online? No, the thing that came from Laura with our agenda for today. I, I think that what what you're looking at there is actually been incorporated in M09 that's on on the website. Those changes were approved. Those changes were adopted. Adopted now. I mean, the role of the search committee seems pretty modest, but uh, so I guess uh, I'm not totally following what has to be done to this, uh, but maybe the whole point is that needs to be studied more. Well, yeah, again, I, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to get standing behind a pulpit here. Uh, Steve, if for no, no other reason, the M09, which is the official online document, the document online is the official document that the association is supposed to be following. If nothing else, the form application form that's in that resolution online is not in fact the approved form. So for if no other reason, M09 has to be a, a, a amended for that for that reason that you don't have the you don't have documented in a resolution as is now the correct form. Now there are many other changes that that uh, should be made or could be made to M09. But here here's the and perhaps I am I'm not only out of line but I am I'm off on a on a tangent here but there are two things involved here if the search committee is to go forward, this resolution needs to be amended to bring it in line with the current facts of life and the in the bylaws and any other thing in the resolution that may need to be or, or would be appropriate to change. Second is what may be a larger issue, and that's the future of the search committee. Yeah. My personal opinion, and I think it's as I mentioned earlier, the board bylaws meeting of uh, almost a couple of years ago now, and the description of the bylaws change that appeared in the, the, the pamphlet of changes and board positions on the changes does not support ignoring the appointment of a, by, a, a search committee. Uh, and for that, for those reasons, uh, I, the board, in my opinion, has to be involved in dis making a decision where they're going to go regarding the search committee. I uh, so how, how that's brought about, I, I'm not. I, I step back, and I'm, I'm not going to say any more. Yeah, uh, Jim, I, I I agree with. Uh, your view. I, uh, my my own view 
um, is that the uh, a board approved form, which for candidates, which was a form which was approved. Uh, I want to say March or April of 2023. Um, I, I think can be appended at some other place on the website. Um, if the board were to decide there should not be a search committee, but in order to eliminate, if that's what the board decides, it would also require a uh, change to the bylaws where the bylaws make reference to uh, the role of the search committee. In other words, you can't, to, to me, you cannot not have a search committee if the bylaws require you to have a search committee. I think we may be saying the same thing, but I would say it a little bit differently. Um, so it, it, it does seem to me that the, the initial question ultimately is, in the wisdom of the board, should there be a search committee? If they agree that it should be, then this resolution needs to be <clears throat> reviewed, updated, and brought into compliance with the bylaws. If the board were to decide there's no need for a search committee, well, then we have to amend the bylaws, and we would have to take pains to ensure that the board-approved form from, I'm trying to remember when it was, I want to say April or so of 2023, is on the website at an appropriate place for anyone interested to complete if they're going to run for the board. Uh, but I mean, that, well, that has to be true no matter what, right? I mean, that yes, form has yes. got to be right and on the website. Right. Yeah. I, I think the form itself, as a, that the board approved in 2023, is correct. Um, and and, and I, the, the problem in part that I think Jim is referring to and is uh, that the older form uh, that was no longer in compliance uh, with the change in the bylaws is still appended to the resolution for B09, which is the search committee, which no one's paid attention to for at least two years. So, yeah, I mean, I think that th there's several issues that need to be addressed. The board should understand the, the initial question, it seems to me, is you want a search committee or you don't want a search committee. If you do want a search committee, then we got to take the following steps. Uh, I I basically agree with what you said, Steve. Okay. All right. Well, if the committee wants to, I can do it any way you want. If you want to give me a charging document, I'll do that. If you want me to do it more informally, I can do it that way. And if the board decides well, we're not going to do anything until we get a charging document, then give me a charging document. I, I mean, I'll do it any way you want to, but I think that's sort of where we are. So, committee members wise, do you feel that we should put together a charging document and state these concerns um, or bring them to the uh, and send it to the directors for awareness? Um, formally like that um, or you know how, how do how should we proceed is, is is this something that should be tied together with the m06 work that's supposedly being the, done by the elections committee like two separate committees. yes and no in the sense because didn't we talk about this before like elections committee back when we were trying to uh, have the first discussion about whether or not search committee should still exist was to divvy out some of their duties onto the elections committee, but the elections committee at that point said they didn't want any extra duties yeah. um, to deal with like the application and all of that stuff. So I don't necessarily think it should go to them, uh, you know, to look at. Um, I, get, I guess yes. I'm more saying the message is there needs to be a comprehensive review of these election procedures. Part of it goes to the election committee. Part of it has to do with how to handle the search committee. Right. Like something needs to be done on both of those before the next election. Correct. I, right. I, I think that's correct. The only distinction I would make is as it applies to our governance document and the way we're set up, <clears throat> excuse me, um, those are two separate committees right now. And I think the board still has to come to grips with the initial question 
of whether or not they want a search committee. Right. Um, yeah. If they want a search committee, then someone, and it may well be this committee, I don't know, someone has to spell out what that those tasks and responsibilities and schedules are going to be consistent with the amended bylaws. If the board says we don't need a search committee, as to whatever other functions need to be addressed, we'll, we'll have to work through that. I mean, that that's sort of what I'm, I think right now. Got it. Go back to Mike. Well, so as far as the charging document issue goes, when the bylaws got approved, there were a number of changes that had to be made to different resolutions. But the, the charging document that it was used to get the bylaws updated it was kind of the driving force for all those other ones. We didn't write a whole bunch of separate charging documents for all those other resolutions. So it, it seems to me like it's, it's already a documented uh, issue, outstanding issue. Um, but if the board said, give me a charging document, I guess we'll write one up. But it's, you know, they, <clears throat> it's not this board's problem, but it is a problem left over from previous boards that needs right. to be resolved. So, so what I'm hearing is that maybe we should start with the informal route and have our liaison bring up the topic with the directors to say, you know, hey, do we have a search committee or or not? Um, that the bylaws committee is questioning, you know, this. Um, as it pertains to the M09. Well, and we're, then, we're pointing out that it's an outstanding that's right. and unresolved that, that issue. This has yeah. been a, 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 a question and concern for what, at least one or two election cycles now. And we don't want to move, keep moving forward doing election cycles and not have something resolved about it. Yeah, I think it needs to start out informal simply because okay. it starts out philosophically. Like you said, search committee or no? Question number one. And from there, we'll know which path we're going to take okay. and what. Um, so that would be my recommendation that you bring up that question. We need to we need to make a decision about this one way or the other. And then what we do will depend on the answer to that question. OK. OK. So that would be you, you would. <laughs> So when we say informally as an agenda item to the board or as an informal email that this is something we need to think about and discuss. And you call informal. I, what yeah. I, I, will, I will I will send an email to the board. I will uh, ensure that council gets a copy of that email. Um, uh, and then uh, we'll we'll see what sort of response we get one way or the other. My my guess is we may not get anything. For a couple of months, I don't know. I mean, it depends on how quickly people want to focus on this, but it's right. uh, much, much like the issue with the candidate form. Um, it seems to me this is something that does need to be addressed, and right. one way or another. Yeah, right. Yeah, one way or another. I, mean, I, you know, we, we all may have our own view as to what to do. I have mine, but. Um, you know, it's up. It's it's the board has to make a decision one way or the other. And at least if you're making the effort, uh, the initial informally email to bring it to their attention, like you said, you know, we have we have requested our liaison to share that concern. Yeah. It's being done. It's documented that it was received. Now, however long it takes after that. At least nobody can say, well, why didn't you bring this up earlier? We are bringing it up again. And, I, and by the way, of the year. yeah, and for what it's worth, I'll leave it to the board to decide. Well, we're not going to kick this around until we get a formal charging document. And, and then you'll come back and give them a charging document. Right? Yeah, I mean, I'm just, yeah. uh, I think there's enough questions in this, enough to chew on that, that um, you know, the board's going to have to decide how it wants to proceed. So. And the only thing I'll, I'll say is, this seems to come up about the same time every year in the fall. Mm -hmm. And then after it gets kicked around for a couple of months. Now it's right before the election. Right before yeah. the election. That's right. It gets so, it, it turns into a last minute 
you know, oh, it's February and we need to kick some stuff off by March. And so, in other words, we only have what yeah. three months to do something with this. Uh, but most, most, if we're going to correct December. Well, I, I would say this. If, if, and I, I, I'm going to say this with just another question. I'm not sure if it's going to like what I'm going to say. <laughs> but if the board's ultimate decision is to basically cancel out the um, search committee, then the remaining technical changes would be, all right, we, where do we put the candidate form? And then we have to amend the bylaws. If the board turns around and says, no, we see a need for the search committee Someone, whoever it's going to, it could end up going to council. I don't know, but someone's got to draft whatever needs to be revised in uh, M09 to comply with the bylaws and rechart of the search committee. You know, that's, but that, if we, if that's the way they want to go, then you're right. We only have a couple of months to get that done. Uh, so that's what I would say. Yeah. Jim? Yeah. <laughs> Take me to the woodshed on that one or not? <laughs> no, I, I'm I'm fine with this being discussed. Okay. Okay. So this, uh, I should have said something earlier, I guess, more specifically, but that was what that was the remainder of our agenda items. Other than the annual report. Other than the annual report. report. Correct. Before we get to that, though. Yeah. If I could go back you wanted to, to go over the document. Uh, no, I wanted to go back to this M1 compliance procedures. Oh, okay. Sort of go back to it. Basically, it relates to the art committee. So either last meeting or the meeting before, we submitted an input to art. Correct. About because we were told that they were getting ready to update correct the we art did. guidelines. Right. And not we heard anything from Yeah. That. So I'm kind of following up on that mm -hmm. because there were really two things in that recommendation. One was the the issue where we're we're not in compliance with Maryland state law about election signs, right? Um, and they needed to go in and change the wording so that we were in compliance. That's pretty straightforward. But the other was something I when I was in the art guidelines looking for this other thing about signs that I discovered. Is in the art guide. Art guidelines basically outlaw rentals in motion signs. Rentals. Rentals. You mean, you mean like rentals? It's got three or four different names of what they call them, but all the different names of what they call properties being used for rentals are what we do today. I would be surprised if they if you could outlaw rentals. It says you, it says you cannot use this property for, and then it's all these rental descriptions. So I was kind of shocked because I thought I'd reviewed that document a number of times, but I guess I was always looking in the sections that have to do with building stuff, right? But that's in the dark guidelines. Well, so if if they truly are reviewing it, and if they are going to issue an update to it, somebody needs to look at that. Because there's no way we're in compliance with that. All right. Let, let, let me make one observation. Of that. Um, it was under home businesses. The, the, the <laughs> guidelines themselves uh, are different than the provisions of what we had with M01 in terms of, comp of the compliance procedures. Um, you know, the guidelines are, you, you have to be in. You have to be found either in compliance or out of compliance with the guidelines. But the, the M01 resolution itself uh, had its genesis with the change in the Homeowners Act, which gave uh, anyone who had an issue broadly beyond just uh, uh, architectural issues, uh, but anyone who uh, runs the risk of losing a right or access uh, to an amenity, they have what I've always referred to as due process. Right, right. Um, so those are sort of two separate issues. Uh, on the, what, I'm sorry. On the, on the first issue, I, I mean, I sort of assume this red line is responsive to some of our input from early in the spring. But maybe that's wrong. I mean, it's a big red line, but. 
Uh, where are you seeing the arc red line? Well, the thing we were discussing before with all the red oh no, that's a feet. that's a resolution. That's not the arc guideline. That's a resolution. Yeah, right. No, I right. know, but the resolution is what we were reviewing in the spring and said it had to comply with the due process, and there were some yes. weird things about when they could make right. changes and when the appeal happened and when the hearing right. happened. All, all that is correct. I, I believe that's correct, and I think there's. Uh, I don't quite know how to say this. Um, there, the new board and council uh, may go in a different direction than that which was considered by this committee and by ARC uh, last spring. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't reviewed the document. I mean, I got it and I sent it to Linda and I said, you know, to Linda, she she can now give the committee homework, <laughs> which you now have. Um, so uh, uh, my, my point is, I, I don't disagree with what you're saying about the, what's in the guidelines, uh, but that is separate and distinct from what is in M01, most people. No, I, I understand that. Right. I, I, for me, in my brain, it was linked because this is what happens if you don't comply with the guidelines. Yes, yes, absolutely. But what if there's stuff in the guidelines that shouldn't be there? It shouldn't be there. Yeah, well, that's... And because we had previously submitted that input about the uh, updating it to the Homeowners Act, <clears throat> when I discovered, I think it was under home businesses, mm -hmm. when I discovered that, I added that as, oh, by the way, this is also in here. Right. And somebody needs to look at this because this is clearly not what we do today in Ocean Pines. Yeah. So maybe they were already aware of it. Maybe they were already dealing with that. I don't know. But um, it just seemed like, uh, who's who's the board liaison now for the art committee? Uh, Elaine Frady, I think. Elaine? As, as I recall. Yeah. I guess it's really not action for this committee. It was just, it was something that we, I guess, informally right. submitted to yeah, them right. as an, oh, by the way, Attention. you yeah. need to look at this. Yeah. Um, and I don't, I don't know, just, I, I guess I'm maybe talking more as a association member rather than a committee member about this. <clears throat> I think it's not important. It's just, you know, two separate things. Okay. Uh, so are you uh, saying the home-based business Provisions of the art guidelines don't allow rental. Correct. Correct. Like, for example, one of them says you can't rent out a room of your house, and you can't have a you can't have a boarding house, or you can't run a bed and breakfast. Well, uh, Airbnb is exactly that. It does say bed and breakfast in the name of the website. Yep. Interesting. Yeah, I, I um, um, I mean, I understand from an art guideline standpoint that we want to control the aesthetics of the property and any impact on neighbors, right? Uh, but what goes on behind closed doors that has no effect on the parking or the looks of the place or affects neighbors, I'm not sure it should be in the art guidelines because it's architectural, right? Mm -hmm. It's not. It's not property use guidelines, right? That should be something in our bylaws or in the resolution. Um, but um, I have the art guidelines up right now. Do you remember where it is? It was, it was under home business. Page 36 and 37. No, page 36. Which is the page number on the PDF rather than the. Yeah, scroll, scroll up. That's the right part. Scroll down to F. Boarding house, rooming house, bed and breakfast, or private educational institution. You can't room you can't room school. school. You can't room school. Yeah, that it seems to me that whole paragraph needs to come out of the art guidelines. Well, and some of those terms aren't used anymore. Changed. Some yeah, some of those terms aren't used anymore. Like I had to look up rooming house. So a rooming house is where you rent out a room. Right. A room. Yeah. Right. You have an extra yeah. spare bedroom and you rent that out. Yeah. We do that all the time. 
People in Ocean Pines do that every summer when the J1 students show up. Right. Um, so it just, I'm always concerned about things we have in our documentation that will get us in trouble one day and land yeah. us in court. Yeah. Right. So if we're trying to stay out of court, things like that need to go away. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have counsel. The rest of the stuff in there kind of makes sense, right? You don't want a bunch of vehicles parking in the front because you're running some business. Right. You don't want to have signs. You don't want the front of your house to look like a business necessarily. I mean, that all stuff kind of makes sense. But uh, but that one paragraph, F, I was like, whoa. So anyway, that that's not on our agenda. That's that's maybe I'll send an email to Elaine or something and just. Well, say, just the fact that a lot of people work from home now is also probably implicated here. Exactly. Well, yeah, you you start digging into it, and I mean, I, technically, I have a home business. I'm a one man consulting company, and I run it out of a spare bedroom, right? Right. I didn't ask anybody permission to do that. No. Nope. I didn't apply for any, you know, fill out any forms or do anything like that. Yeah. But. You wouldn't, nobody comes to my house. I don't have any customers. My house has not changed because of it. I don't have any signage outside. Right, right. right? And um, well, I think there's, a, I mean, there's a basic question as to whether or not we would even have the authority to impose those sort of restrictions anyway. I mean, there's a certain yeah. right to the use of property that you own. Right. Yeah, right. with, with, with then basically, you don't feel like you're an owner if. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. I, th yeah. there are restrictions to be sure. I'm not saying it's restriction free, but uh, I, some of this may actually not wouldn't pass just, you know, plain view test or whatever you want to call it. So. Especially in a document titled Architectural Review Guidelines. Yeah, right. You know, how you build it, how it looks, you know, the sense. aesthetics of it, the impact on your neighbors. All of that makes sense, but what actually goes on behind your closed doors that doesn't impact any of that stuff just seems right. seems very questionable. Any, anyway, I so the last topic yeah <laughs> um, is the annual report. So I've started it, as you can see, I've, you know, updated like the the uh, dates and things like that. Um, I'm using the same format that we used from last year. Um, the first section is where we list all of us. Um, I did include the board liaison uh, that uh, we don't have to um, add that on there, but I figured it didn't hurt. You can take me off if you want. I don't okay. know. Okay, that's up to you. Well, I can't oh, do it. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I we want it documented. <laughs> <laughs> well, because you know, like even even uh, Keith just said on the governance doctor doctorate. Uh, document, I can't talk, um, that, you know, some of these things happen under one liaison after another, and we lose track of who it was, and you, we can't even say, um, hey, can you reach out to a former liaison and say, do you have this, you know? Um, so I've got everybody updated there. Major uh, when we, um, uh, our term ends, my term technically ends April. So maybe this is a question for Steve while I'm while we're discussing her. When should I put my renewal slip in? Should I do that for the March March meeting? Like the you know, the March directors meeting to have it ready to go so that because uh, I, I have to do a second term. Yeah. I would, I would say get it in either February or March. Either February one. or March. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Because um, I'm willing to continue as is as chairperson unless you all want to boot me out. That's fine. <laughs> but I don't think right now anybody else wants the chairperson. So I don't mind continuing in that role. Um, but I was thinking about that. I was like, well, I better. When is this report due? The end of this month? No, mine. Uh, oh, this report this should report. be end of October. Well, According to last year when we did this, we have not gotten anything from the president of the directors. The last year, the president sent out something to all the chairpersons saying, hey, your, your annual report is due in a month, and we have not heard. So I am being the proactive person, chairperson, by saying we need to work on the annual um, report so that we can have it. I right think it's uh, is that in C1. Yes, it's in C zero one. Yeah, I think it's a requirement in C one. Right. So. Yeah, but I think it has the actual date. Yeah. So, so but anyway, if it's this month. Right. Uh, oh, shoot. 
So that has all of us listed there. Second section is the major activities uh, report. Uh, and, and this is a PDF, so I can't change it right now, but I have my Word document and um, um, that I can uh, change things on. Um, I need to update, I guess. I'm always confused because uh, the reporting period is technically the last half of 2022 and the first half of 2023, or is it all of 2022? I can't remember now. Jim, can you remember what? It's uh, the end of uh, end of September to uh, the beginning of October. Right, so it would be September 2022 to it, 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 October it, of 2023. Yeah, it, it corresponds with the reporting dates. Let's reporting date. Your, your reporting date, end date, is the end of September. Okay. And your, your report, due date, report due date is the end of October. Right. So I figured the first two we can leave the same, basically, because we continue to, you know, review the resolutions in order to maintain them. Um, committees uh, meetings are, uh, we continue to hold. Uh, to be held both in person and virtually. Um, what the part that I put in red there was for us to decide um, and to uh, how we want to word things there. Did we um, prepare drafts of amendments to resolutions? How do you want to word number three? You know, um, do we do we specify everything that we've gone over using like the governance tracker to state? that kind of stuff, or do we just do a generic more? I don't think we've done that. We before. just leave it at one and two. Yeah, I don't, I don't think we've like listed every <laughs> every action. <clears throat> I think we just said we just worked on stuff uh, generically as our member. So is one and do you feel that one and two state that? Do we need a third statement or not under section two? Can I, can I make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think it's worthwhile for the committee to put in their annual report that the work, a lot, a lot of what the committee's work is, is maintaining and updating and cataloging the work consistent with the governance document. I think you should mention the governance document in the report. Mm -hmm. um, well, I mean, because uh, let, let me just, uh, mm -hmm. and the reason why is uh, I understand why it's there, but uh, now that Colette and Doug are not on the board anymore, um, there's really that institutional memory is not there mm -hmm. anymore. Um, I mean, Doug at one of the, I can't remember which board meeting, but, you know, made a point of saying, this is why we're going through this process because of what's in the governance document. Um, so I, my, my suggestion would be to the committee that you include a sentence or two as to a lot of the, I don't know how you want to word it, but the, the, the committee is charged with maintaining and updating uh, the various resolutions you know, within the governance document on a on a regular basis or works to that effect. Um, and you could even list what the broad categories are, you know, committees, finance, um, you know, operations, whatever term, you know, whatever term you want to use. Um, but I, I, I do think it'd be worthwhile since it's a, it's a document that's been around for I don't know, six, seven, eight, nine years. I don't know how many. Well, Jim probably knows how many years it's been here, but I mean, it's it should be vested someplace. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this would be a good place for it. But that's, I agree with that. And I was just going to say, especially our last one, because now we're adding this document yes. with our minutes yeah. that we get posted. Yeah, I think it's a good you idea. Know? So it makes sense that we are making it visible and. Um, yeah, okay. I agree with that. All right, so we can I can add something like that. So what what we'll do is we'll go through. You guys give me the uh, inputs, you know, on these sections, and then I will do up a um, 
a clean copy and then I'll send it back out to every, to all of us for any final things before we do a final submit at the end of October. Um, since obviously our next meeting won't be until uh, November. Okay. Um, so under section three, problems encountered and assistance required, I, I would, feel like that one leaves can stay the same. Well, I would just delete the second sentence. I remember, I remember oh, that's true. Take, because take we had that because we're caught up now. Right? Yeah, we're caught up. We had a massive backlog we were struggling with, and we really needed the board to tackle a bunch of them, and they did. Right. They, they burned through a bunch of them. So I, I would keep the first sentence and just delete the second one. Section four request for items to be included in the OPA budget. This is again something that we typically don't um, have any financial requests, but I feel like we can leave what we had in there last year that we like teens. So we want to continue to encourage them to build that into their budget and that um, uh, the, the, the funding, the additional funding that might be necessary if our committee feels that something needs to go to legal review, you know, in addition to whatever the directors would say that, that, you know what I mean? We don't really say, we just say, hey, can legal counsel look at this? And then if, if, if that's an expense, build, have them build that into the budget, you know? I agree. I would just suggest that the paragraph start out with a sentence that says something like a continued um you know we, we continue this consideration from the previous year or some something to say that the this different that yeah the differentiates this paragraph from last year right. so somebody doesn't think they just accidentally <laughs> left it in there and didn't think right. about it. Okay. That's continued consideration from last year, the committee, blah 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 blah. Right. So, something okay. like that. Were you gonna say something, Monty? Nope, just a green. Okay. okay. Audio. okay. <laughs> so section five is recommendations for board action. Does this section need to be updated? Um, this is where we might mention the updating of these election resolutions, if that's something that we think is appropriate. Yeah, maybe maybe just a couple of quick sentences that say there's some lingering issues um, with regard uh, issues and questions with regard to uh, you know M09 and the search committee that is going to require some consideration by the board and M06, yeah, or M06, M06, yeah, yeah, for the next election, which is. Presumably next That's summer. Great. Yeah. So we're going to well get it in the end of October. So I think you want to put something in it that says that, uh, along the lines of the committee is looking forward to receiving in a timely fashion <laughs> the recommendations of the elections committee. A lawyer. I'll leave it to I can write it. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I we're still so looking forward to your input, which we're going to receive very quickly. Well, I've written, I've written emails like that to um, oh, school principals when I'm trying to get them to, you know. Oh, yes, I, I agree with that. Some, some sentiment to that effect. Because I think, really, right now, I, you know, going through our stuff, that's one of our biggest concerns. Is getting this uh, right. Is Somehow. Laura, this Jim. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't yeah. mention this earlier, but is the committee aware that there is the elections report online for the this past election? The committee, yeah. elections committee, has posted an elections report. Yeah. Okay, they did. All right. Um, is there anything else for that section number five then? I think the elections committee recognized. What? Say it again. I said, I think in their report, there was a passing reference to the elections committee recognizing 
that work needs to be done on M06. That's my recollection. I don't remember the exact word, but I think well, that's a fancy yeah. reference okay. to it. Right. But I think well, this, to have it documented from our point of view, too. So. Yeah, I think it's Okay. So I, I, I recommend you read the report. Yeah. I, 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 wouldn't, necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that, Steve. That there is there is reference to a bylaws issue. There's no question about that. Yeah, I, I thought okay. I read it once I, and then I, okay, where I set it aside. Where is it on the website? It should, it should be under the elections committee uh, okay. section of the uh, okay. on the website. I can't pull it up right now. That's okay. It's just, it's, it's, that's where it is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um. Anything else then for section five? Section six is the recommendations for our committee work for, um, I guess I need to adjust that uh, date then. No, I think that's right. For the rest of 2023, end of 2024. So what are our goals as a committee? Um, this is what we had last year listed. Um, is there any, you know, uh, adjustment of it um do we need to uh, actually that's where we've got the search committee and stuff listed too yeah we identified it last year as a problem right and actually you know what maybe in that other section we put uh, uh noted in section six we may have i i don't know if i left it on there uh, I know, I know in the old one, we had something that said refer to section six, and I think that's where we spelled it out. So, uh, but that was for us. Um, that other section is for the directors. So does anybody have any thoughts on anything upcoming that we need to specifically state that we will be looking at or just is this fill good? The vacancy, fill the vacancy. Okay. Anything else? Again, I can send this back out, you know, I can uh, I'll, I'll update it. Um, and then I'll send it back out to all of us as a committee. And uh, um, y'all can, you know, give me the feedback, edit, whatever, before we, and we can uh, approve a final copy based uh, through email if you're comfortable with that. Once we get it, you know, worded correctly. Was that, is that good for everybody? I'm good with that. Is there anything below this? No, that should be the end. Okay. That's how it ends with section six. Okay. Because there, there's no template other than this. This is the template that. Yeah, as I recall, have. this is actually something we discussed. You know, so. as I think it was part of the C01 discussion. Right. There's a standardization of this, standardization of minute meeting, and so much yeah. stuff, right? But All right. So, any traction. That covers everything that we have discussed under new business. Um, is there anything under the governance document that we need to do? Yeah, can we just go through this real quick? Sure. Um, I, I should have gone back to the website and seen if these documents were updated, and I did not. Uh, the last time I checked, it was the 4th of September. Okay. Um, uh, how much time do we have? Do you want to do you want to pull them up real quick on the website? Unless you can tell me how to get my computer to stop being cranky. It the uh, I kept trying to pull it up and it won't let me. It won't go. Keeps doing this Bing thing. How did I get Bing on there? I don't know. How it's get it, I don't know how to get it to turn off and go to the regular site if I want. I should have it for a second there. 
Could be uh, right. Go over one to the left. Ocean pines. I don't know how to get it under here, though. Okay. Close, that, close that path. Yeah, go to, go to this one. Yeah, close that path. There you go. And then um, go to departments. Like, yeah, just go down and click straight on departments. To where? Departments. Click on that. Then it, this Bing thing. Why is this Bing thing in there? I don't even know why this Bing thing is here. I didn't put it on there. My computer no, 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 updated no. and put it in there. I don't know how to get rid of it. Oh, then go back to doing what you were doing when you were typing it in my hand. Up here. Yeah. It was your other way. <laughs> then it says that. And I'm stuck. <laughs> and because remember, it always, my computer always tells me that the, the, the Ocean Pines um, website is not secure. So. Yeah. Let me just see if I can pull it real quick. Okay, so departments. Look at resolutions. Okay, so the first one is B2. It's approved May 20th. Nope, that one hasn't been updated. So B2 is still the old copy online, has not been updated with the new copy that was approved on May of 23. Let me see. I've got a couple of things I got to sign here before I leave today. So maybe that's the reason. Let's see. Yeah, B2 to sign. I got B2. Okay, do you have so B? As as I sign it. Okay. That should be able to go up. Do you have B3 to sign? B3 to sign. B5. B5. B6. B6. Okay, good. And C14. Hang on. That's, that's racket sports. C14. Linda 14. It's racket right. sports. Yeah. That's the proof. Okay, good. All right. So you have those for signature, and then those will get posted. All right. So then that takes us up to uh, B8, and uh, B8 needs a new first reading by the new board. So that's got to get put on the agenda at some point. If, yeah. I'm going to say, I, I'm, I may want to fiddle with that a little bit. But okay. Yes, you're correct. You're correct. Okay. Uh, same thing with B9. Well, I don't know what to do with B9, to be honest with you. I mean, I think we've sort of kicked that around in part because at the time Doug felt it was something that needed to be addressed. I have not gotten anything that suggests from Rick that he wants to follow up with that. And um, there is the issue in B9 about uh, length of time for maintaining mm -hmm. a video of committee meetings and whether the committee all committees have to operate under the same set of rules in other words right uh, do you video do you not video do you you know how you know my general sense has always been that each committee decides for itself and uh well, I think we just we had a charging document for it, so we just need to know whether to stop worrying about it, stop tracking it, to do, delete it off the list. Or well, there is no there is no B nine dealing with records retention right now. I believe within within our our book of resolutions, there Correct. is no B zero nine. Correct. Um, so yeah, right. I'm just saying we had a charging document to draft one. Right, and that was with the old board. 
the new board hasn't said what to do. So I don't really, again, I can raise this as an issue, but I don't, uh, uh, you know. So do charging documents die whenever we have a new board? Uh, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> I would think so, but I'll I'll defer. Uh, to you. Yeah, I I haven't given that much thought. I, you know, I I, I would think it would carry over. You know, if it's an issue that needs to be addressed, it should be it should carry over. Because what? Uh, if, if, it, if a board if it, 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 just carry over until it's complete. Well, what well, I was going to, what I was going to say is whomever whatever entity issued the charging document if they don't want it continued they should re rescind it whether it's the committee or the board okay uh, i would consider them live until they're rescinded okay so maybe that goes on your informal email yeah. <laughs> it's used to discuss i think i better keep them separate all right okay yeah. so uh, uh, my intention spans and all mm -hmm. that <laughs> I, I think the charging document is covered in uh, C01. <laughs> Maybe there should be something up, uh, put in there about how its uh, duration and circumstances in which it it's, uh, uh, ceases to be effective for whatever reason. But uh, you know, personally, I think it would be in effect until the issuing entity uh, resends it. OK, uh, so that brings us to the next one, C01 which is overdue, September 22, um, a charging document was created. Um, the last update I had on was February of this year. And um, the charging document was specifically asking about annual resolution review inclusion in the annual report. And this is for the, uh, for the EC chair, executive committee chair. Who's the president of the association? Yeah, so that that's got to be followed up on. Yeah, I uh, I mean this again rehash the history, but um, this committee had what I would I don't mean I don't mean this in an offensive sense, but some minor suggested changes to C zero one dating back to early the last board, uh, the old board, last year's board, right. Um, the executive committee under the direction of then president uh, was to review the uh, primarily the appointments process, among other things, but primarily the, the idea was to try to automate as much of the appointments process as possible. Uh, and they had take that, you know, there's a lot of ideas were picked around, drafts were circulated. But nothing ever came out of it. and there was one meeting of the executive committee. Uh, I don't think there was ever a second, as I can, best as I can recall. Um, and nothing ever happened, so everything just sat. Mm -hmm. um, so we're we're basically where we were mm -hmm. September of last year. Yeah, yeah. and I don't know. Uh, Is that exactly there, there's, there, there is a reference to an executive committee meeting coming up, but I don't know that anything said. Okay. You, got, you haven't gotten anything. Yeah. Anything. But last year, wasn't it very beginning of December? Yeah, it was, it was, it yeah, was, like it was uh, or something. Last quarter of the calendar year. I don't remember yeah. exactly when, but I think that's right. Yeah. So maybe this is our first one that we list on our annual report as old and somebody needs to make a decision. Either sign it off as is, and then continue to kick whatever the suggestions are around, or right. make decisions about the suggestions. But you know. well, as I say, bylaws, as I recall, had some, I guess, best tweaks to C01. But all that was held in abeyance because the executive committee formed a commi a subcommittee right. to work go through a larger set of issues. I don't. They we never got finished the work. I, I never saw anything. Yeah. And so we just we just sat and waited for them to come back to us and we would have put the two together and sent it off to the right. board. It never it never, yeah, happened. never happened. Yeah. Okay, the next one is our own resolution, uh, which was due the end of last month. Um, <laughs> did uh, anybody come up with any? Mm. See any need for any changes to it? Uh, what's our number? 
C4. Say again. C4. 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 C04. C04. I mean, I'm not sure that we did. I just say I don't, I'm not aware personally of anything that we need to change on it. Yeah, I don't think so either. But you, Augie. I remember looking at it after our last meeting and thinking it looked pretty correct. Looking for it now. I can see your word document. Okay. That's this is ours. C C04. It's not the perfect clean copy, but uh um, looks good to me. It was from June 4th of 2021. I think it's fine for us. So if they just so I'm clear, if the committee is not recommending any changes in their own resolution, right. there's nothing for there's no for yeah, we don't have to do anything. They, with they, that. We, they just notify us and we have to right. the date. That's right. right. Okay. And then we just change the date on, right. you know, hey, have you reviewed it again? Right. It's been two years or whatever. Right. Right. And well, and our procedures say that this decision will be as of this meeting date. Right. Correct. I think I'm going to put this under new business so that it's reflected that we're looking at our own resolution. Okay. Okay. So next is the C06, where, as a courtesy, you were just going to notify the chair and say, "Hey, your your resolution is due." That was last month. Same thing with C07. And if they respond to you and say, nope, we're good to go, then it's simple. And they go in and change the date. Let us all know and say that we're good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, C10, um, overdue since March. They, did, they are in the process of getting a new chair. C10. You may want to just hold off on that. Just, uh, yeah, I think it should be voted on at, the, at this upcoming point. Okay. Uh, C12, same thing. You were going to notify the C12 chair. You were also going to notify the C13 chair. We already talked about C14. We talked about F, FXX. <laughs> v. We talked about M1. Uh, M2. So that was where the GM was supposed to write a manual. Oh, right. Yeah, I, uh, and Jim uh, raised this. I, I, I think I went back and checked, uh, and I'll do it again because I didn't give myself any notes. Um, I think the manual has been completed, uh, but the the minute the policies pursuant. Uh, let me make sure I say this correctly. The, uh, pol the the procedures and policies, if one is in danger of losing access to the amenities, has not yet been acted upon, which I think was the point that Jim was making, uh, not last month, but the month before last. Uh, I, my recollection is the manual is done. 
I'm not sure if the board's voted on it or not. I'll have to go back and check the minutes. I'm uh, just going to put down that you're going to follow up. Yeah, on I'll, 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 I'll try. And, but I'm pretty sure I'm correct that C, uh, uh, M02, much like M01, because of the change in the statute, you know, requires a procedure by which someone can appeal a decision on losing an amenity or the access to an amenity. Uh, and I don't think they ever acted on that. Okay. Uh, and we may be in the same boat with M02 as we are with M01, where council redrafts something, but I don't know that for sure. I'll, I'll go back and check. Um, I noticed on the ones that I just signed, I, uh, they still need the signature from the GM and legal counsel before they can be posted, which I would have thought GM, they should be signing right after this was approved, you know what I mean? Um, so, but all of them. So who does that give those to? Linda. Linda. Yeah, okay. I'll drop. She says, she, she'll, 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 out, she'll work it. I'll drop okay. it up to the window um, and they'll throw it. So, so I've got those done. Um, so in other words, you're not the last signature. So there's really on the you. sheet of paper, I am, but on on the completion por portion of it, it obviously I'm not. Mm -hmm. okay. If that makes sense, you know what I mean. In the way that in the order, it's it's done. It's well, supposed I mean, to be signed by the president. In other words, you're you're not the only blank. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So, so in then, other words, there's really not to be an update on this. Yeah. So then the, the next thing would be general manager and legal have to both sign it and then it can get posted. Um, okay. Or updated. All right. So um, last uh, topic then is date of our next meeting is Friday, November 10th from 1 to 3. I will do my best to be in a... Uh, A good mood that day. Um, that is the personal one year um, uh, anniversary. Do you want to move it? Um, I no. I think we can leave it. We can leave it. I can. It'll be a good distraction. I can focus on that. But if I'm off just a little bit personality wise, y'all will know. Um, <laughs> But that weekend, I've made sure that I'm not working at the oh, okay. um, uh, hospital that weekend. Okay. Uh, but um, because I've got that scheduled to work with, so I've already got off for you know that. So I can do this. Um, just you know, <laughs> it, it just may be I'm not may not be quite as perky as I normally am. Okay. Otherwise, after that, it's December eighth. And then we're at the end of 2023 already. Um, so, um, anybody have anything else that needs to be discussed or anything before we um, adjourn? With four minutes, we are around. doing good. I know. So it's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Augie, you have anything? No. Nothing for me. <laughs> well, he's going out of town. He's got to go. He's got to get busy. He's got to uh, go out of town tomorrow, right? Um, and then, Jim, do you have anything? Uh, nothing further. Nope. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. So, is there any objections to adjourning at 2 56 p.m.? So, motion. All right. Second. It is moved. <laughs>